talk about quasi-linear equations and the method of characteristics. If a PDE is nonlinear, several things could happen. Today I will talk about nonlinear equations which are weakly nonlinear. They are called quasi linear. So, what is a quasi linear PDE? A PDE is quasi linear, quasi linear, quasi linear. If it is linear in the highest order derivatives of the unknown function. For example, let's consider the following equation. Time zero. So this equation is obviously nonlinear because of the right hand side. But if we look at the left hand side, on the left hand side there are highest order derivatives appearing in these equations, which is just u sub xx and u sub yy. And both of these derivatives appear linear in the equation. So this equation is quasi linear. And obviously non linear. In the following, I will be interested in quasi-linear PDEs of the first order. Everything which I want to say today easily generalizes to higher dimensions n, but today I will concentrate only on the case of n equal to independent variables. So n equal to independent variables. So we have x1, which I will be denoting by x and x2, which I will be denoting by y. So let us write the most general quasi-linear PDE of first order. So So we are in dimension n equal to, so we can only have, we only have uh, two first order derivatives, u sub x, u sub y, and these are at the same time the highest order derivatives, so the equation should be linear in them, and the most general form of such an equation, then where ux and uy, u sub x and u sub y stays linearly is this what I have written here, 
there are coefficients a, which can be functions of independent variables x and y, and also dependent variable u, the same with b and c, and that's the most general form of quasi-linear linear PDE of the first order. So this is the equation in full beauty if we sometimes I just like abbreviate it to write it like this a u sub x plus b u sub y equals c and it's assumed that a b c can be functions of x y and u okay so that's the most general equation so today I will try to show you how to solve this equation how to solve it Well, try to interpret these equations geometrically. So here is our Quasilina first order PDE, which I prefer now to write it like this. And let us suppose that we have its solution. So let u be its solution. Right? Uh, one can interpret this solution geometrically that it gives a graph or a surface in x, y, u space. So this is our surface here equal u of x, y. Uh, formally, I can write this surface as sigma. to be a subset of our three-dimensional space, which is nothing but a zero set of a certain function. Let us call it at x, y, u to be u of x, y minus u. And we want that it is a zero set of this function, okay? Let us now concentrate on the gradient of this defining function phi. So it is phi sub x, phi sub y, phi sub u, or explicitly using the definition of phi, it is u sub x, u sub y, and minus one. So note that in this gradient, two first component components, ux and uy, are the same guys that appear in our equation. So this suggests that we should consider another vector in this three-dimensional space, call it v, to be a vector with components x, y, u, such that x component is a, y component is b, and u component is c. Now, let us call this gradient as n, due to this, that gradient is just aligned with the normal vector to the surface. And now, let us consider what does it mean that these two vectors v and n in this three-dimensional space are orthogonal to each other. So they are orthogonal provided that scalar or dot product between vector n and vector v is zero. So let us write it, let us write it explicitly. What does it mean? So it is a times u sub x plus b times u sub y minus c. So this 
orthogonality of these two vectors means that this is zero, but it's nothing but our equation star. So that's in this way we may interpret uh, an equation, quasi-linear equation of first order, but an equation of orthogonality of two vectors. One of them is just the normal vector to the surface defined by a solution, and the other is just the vector v, which is defined in terms of coefficients defining the equation, a, b, c, right? So how this information that n is perpendicular to v can help us in solving our quasi-linear PDE? The crucial observation here is that since n is normal to the surface of solution, that everything which is orthogonal to it, and in particular v, must be tangent to the surface of a solution. So what this relation here tells us, it tells us that vector v is tangent to the surface of solution sigma. We will make use of this observation soon, but before we need some preparations which concern these initial conditions for our PDE. How to visualize initial condition for our solution on a graph of a solution? So here is the graph of our solution. Our solution, as we know, is a surface. And because solution is a two-dimensional object, one understands that initial conditions for a solution is some one-dimensional object. Actually, a curve here. So, if we want to make initial conditions for a solution of a PDE on the plane as our quasi-linear first-order PDE, then we specify a curve, like a curve in space x, y, u, like our red curves on this picture, and then we are trying to find a solution whose graph contains this curve. So how to do it in practice? We have a curve in our x, y, u space and now we want to find a solution whose graph contains it. So how to do it? One possibility is to find curves which are transversal to the initial condition given by the red curve such that they are always tangent to the solution. How to find such curves? Here, the information about vector v comes into play. Remember that this vector v, v, which was a, b, c, where a, b, c were defining our equation as a, u, x plus b, u, y equals c, that this vector was perpendicular to the normal vector to the solution, therefore it was tangent to the graph of solution. Note then since a, b, c depends on x, y, u, this vector v is defined at every point or of our, or of our x, y, u space. And in every point 
this vector is always tangent to the solution correspond to some solution of our equation so in particular if we just parameterize our initial condition curve with parameter s so let's let's call this curve gamma of s and then if we are at the point at which the parameter is s on this red curve then we have also at this point a vector v which is always tangent to the solution so let's take our curve our white curve here at this point to be precisely tangent to this vector v so this gives a differential equation for the white curve transversal to the red curve how this equation looks like if the curve this curve let's say at point s is called c and let's say that the par parameter along this curve is t then this curve c s of t which has coordinates x it depends on t and on s y depending on t and on s and u depending on t and on s but this curve we want that this curve will be precisely tangent to the vector v therefore dx over dt dy over dt and du over dt which is the tangent vector to our white curve should be the same as vector v which is just a b c so in this way we find a system of ordinary differential equations for free variables x of t y of t and u of t and these guys satisfies differential equations like dx over dt is a of x y u dy over dt is b of x y u and du over dt is c of x y u and if you find such curve so solving these differential equations these ordinary differential equations that this curve is definitely tangent to the solution passing through point gamma s on our initial value curve and now if we just change parameter s we can find another curve another curve another curve and by means of these white curves we can weave a solution to our partial differential equation that contains the red curve as its initial conditions the white curves on our picture here which solve this system of ordinary differential equations are called characteristic curves for the PDE star if we know all the characteristic curves in all points of the initial value curve the red curve on our picture and if at every point of the red curve characteristic curves are transversal to the red curve then at least in the vicinity of the red curve we can weave a solution to the PDE that contains the initial value curve we illustrate these ideas on an example let b be a constant and we consider a very simple pde of the form we want to solve this pde 
and find a solution that satisfies the initial condition of the form u of zero x of zero y sorry is equal f of y where f is some given function of one variable. So here is our PDE and here is initial condition. So to apply our ideas, the first thing we should we should do, we should try it this initial condition in the form of a curve in x, y, u space. So how to do this? Let's see. So what this equation means? It means that when x is equal to 0, y can be arbitrary, call it s, and u is equal to f of s. So here, this gives us the curve gamma of s to be curve with x coordinate being 0, y coordinate being s, and u coordinate being f of s. So this is our red curve. Now we need our vector v. So to make characteristic curves, we need our vector v. So vector v is given in terms of the equation itself. So x coefficient of this vector v is this what stays at u, u sub x, which is 1. y coordinates of this vector v is this what stays at u sub y, which is b. And the u coordinate is 0. Sorry, 0. This is 0. Okay. So how the ODE for the characteristic curve looks like. dx over dt should be x coordinate of vector v, which is 1. dy over dt should be y coordinate of vector v, meaning b. And du over dt is the u coordinate, which is just 0. These, these are equations for characteristics. So these are equations for characteristics. Of course, this system of ordinary differential equations is very simple. One can solve it immediately. One can see that x is t plus some constant, call it s1 y is bt plus another constant, call it s2, and u is just a constant, call it s3. So this is the general solution for the characteristic equations, but this general solution should satisfy our initial conditions. And our initial conditions are as follows, that x of 0 s is equal 0, y of 0 s is equal s, and u of 0 s is equal f of s, where here zeros stay for t, right? So if you put t equal 0 in these equations here, then you, we have that 0, which is x of 0, s, must be equal s1. Then s, which is y of 0, s, must be equal s2. And f of s, which is u of 0, s, must be equal s3. Right? So therefore, the solution of these equations, this solution, when specified to these initial conditions 
gives us x being t, y being b t plus s, and u being s3, which is just f of s, right? So what we have obtained here, what we have obtained here, we have obtained a parametric description of a surface in x, y, u space. Why it is a surface? Because it depends on two free parameters, t and s. So we have a surface. And what is this surface? The surface is a graph of our solution passing through the curve gamma of s. So how to see how the solution looks like as a solution in the form u as a function of x and y, how this solution really looks like. It's very easy. We start with the last equation. Last equation says that u is equal f of s. But from this equation, from this equation, we see that s is equal y minus bt and t is x. So actually it is y minus bx. And here what we get is just a solution to this equation with this initial condition. Is it really like that? Let's check. So what is u of 0, y? x is 0, so it is f of y. So indeed, this this uh, condition is satisfied. So now one has to check. Now one has to check if the solution, as we have, satisfies the original PDE. So let's check. Here is our solution. U equals f of y minus bx and let's see what is what is the x and y derivative therefore of function u we apply chain rule right u sub x is f prime and now derivative of this with respect of this thing with respect to x which is minus b so it is u sub x now so it is multiplication here. So what is u sub y? u sub y is f prime and derivative of this thing with respect to y which is 1. So what is therefore u x plus b u y? It is minus b f prime plus b times f prime equals 0. So indeed, u equal f of y minus bx satisfies pde ux plus b ui. And we have just have checked that it satisfies this equation with initial condition u of 0 y equal f of y. Thus, the ideas that we just introduced in general setting for having characteristics work in this case. Let us summarize the method of characteristics. What is the task? Task is to solve a first order 
quasi linea PD of the form for an unknown function with functions a of x y u b of x y u and c of x y u being given and with initial condition given in a parametric form as so that is the task what is the solution or how the solution is obtained it's obtained in three steps First, for each value of the parameter S, search for curves XS of the Y S of T and U S of T satisfying the following system of ODEs. This system of, the, of ODEs must satisfy initial conditions. The curves in X, Y, U space are called characteristic curves of the PD star.
Point two in finding solutions is as follows. Knowing characteristic curves for all values of the parameter S and parameter T, the surface sigma in x, y, u space given by represents graph of a solution to the PDE in a parametric form. To get the solution as u being function of x and y, one has to pass to step number three, invert the map, parameters ts are sent to x and y, x of ts, y of ts and the solution to the PDE in the form u as u of function fxy is obtained via u equal u of t of x, y, s of x, 